to the floor. And so when the Lord compels me to do that, I know that God is doing something. And I know that there is something that he wants to speak to me specifically. And a lot of people probably didn't understand 2006 when God gave me the Threshing Floor Conference. And I began to write the book. And I just said, God, I don't know what you're saying, but I know that this is going to be something that is going to be significant throughout the ages. And as I went back to look at it, look at the history of why the Lord would have it be so that they speak of it as many times as they do in the scripture. And when you look at the history of it, threshing floors, threshing floors were different than just going to prayer. One of the reasons why you have to look at the nature of why it's made and how it's made to understand that God always takes something for our own finite minds, not because he needs to, but he does that out of his grace so that we could have a clear understanding of what he's trying to say to us. So he'll take something natural and he apply it to something spiritual so that your mind can transcend to that place. He said that one of the things that was very vital about a threshing floor, it is essential, essential, and I know we've heard that word during this season, but it is essential for sustaining the life because the transactions of the life of grain or whatever is harvest, whatever is harvest, the life of it is transacted on a threshing floor. In other words, that which doesn't belong to it, like if you take a barley of wheat and you put it on the threshing floor, and they pound that wheat until the unnecessary parts are removed, and they get the wheat, the life of the plant, is developed and plowed through until it's found. And so they said that a threshing floor should never be made where there is no wind. The threshing floor has to be created in a spot where the wind is constantly blowing. Because when they get through shucking, as my grandmother would say, when they get through shucking, the dead thing, the unnecessary thing off of the stock of the grain, then they themselves don't need to pick it up and take it off. The wind would come and blow it off of the threshing floor. And so when you are developing a threshing floor, the threshing floor has to be developed. It has to be developed so it can help you to get your harvest. My God from Zion, he talking to us today. It says here that a threshing floor was meant for the sustaining and the giving of life. And so that the people that would go to the threshing floor, they were not going to get a dead thing. But they were going to get what was going to sustain them in life. My God, I feel God already. And so here it says, here it says that when the threshing floor is operated on, that it was a known fact that you could not leave any micro products on the floor. In other words, every time you went to the threshing floor, every time you go there to get the grain, they said if you leave anything that is of value on that floor, 
then it is liable to be, to, to be stolen or it is liable to be just blown away. And so the person that threshes has to be a person that is very careful. A person that threshes has to be a person that, 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 that pays great attention to detail. The person that threshes has to be someone that, that, that before I leave the threshing floor, I have to make sure that I didn't leave life down there. That I didn't leave anything that was valuable down there. And I have to make sure that there is nothing wasteful that is remaining on the floor. And so then the thresher, it is the responsibility of the thresher then, and this is going to bless you today, I know it is. It is the responsibility of the thresher then is to wait for the wind. My God from Zion. It is the responsibility of the thresher to say, I just got to picking up life. But I got to make sure the next time I come to the threshing floor that nothing dead is on the floor. And so I don't feel a breeze right now, but I'm going to sit here and I'm going to wait till the wind comes and washes off the dead thing. Because when I come back to this floor, I don't want to have to come back with repetitive prayers. I don't want to have to come back speaking something over and over and over again. I want to be a person that when I go to the threshing floor, I want to make sure that I win there and I picked up that which the Lord said is to stay alive and I watched the wind of the spirit blow away that which the Lord said was unnecessary are you hearing that today are you hearing that today I'm telling you somebody that's listening you need to hit that share button because some of your friends need to hear this because the more I thought about it because back then People weren't what they call wealthy to the point that everybody had livestock. But it was of necessity that everybody have grain. Good Lord, I want you to see this today. It was of the necessity of an archaeologist by the name of Whitaker that said that everybody, every family should have a threshing floor. Lord have mercy. And they said that back then in, uh, in the country of Cyprus, they would have threshing floors next door to each other. And, and watch this. And the reason why they would have threshing floors next door to each other so they can talk about their grain. They can talk about what they harvest in. Watch this. And they can watch for their neighbor as well to make sure that a thief didn't come and take the grain off of the threshing floor in case I have to go to the bathroom, in case I have to go and attend to the baby. I had somebody else that understood the importance of having a threshing floor. And I'm going to tell you, it's a dangerous thing to mess with people in this hour that don't have a need for a flow. It's a dangerous thing to be friends and relationships with people that don't have a need for the necessity of prayer. Because you're trying to keep something alive. Are you hearing God today? Oh, he's talking to somebody. And watch this. So then he says here. He says here. And, 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 and this thing really, really blessed me. It says that. A threshing floor, a threshing floor could be used in two ways. The threshing floor had a dual responsibility. The threshing floor, back then, some of those floors, if you found a good one, some of them, they said, well, you know what, I just found some hard rock. And the rock is round, and so I'm going to make this a threshing floor. And they would make that a threshing floor. But when you find a good spot, it said that the threshing floor can also be used uh, as a harvesting place. In other words, there's a season when I go on the threshing floor and I get the grain. But then there's a season when I remove everything and that's where I plant too. Oh, are you hearing that? Uh -huh. You plant a harvest there and then you watch the harvest grow. And then after you watch the harvest grow, people, then you cut the harvest down, sit it to the side, transform the floor, and now the same place where you planted is now a place where you harvest. Oh God, who is, my to who is God talking to today? So what am I saying? I'm saying that this thing that you see behind me, week after week after week, this is not just cover. It is not just blankets. This is not just some white sheets that are laying down here. This is a place where I harvest. This is a place where I plant the seed of prayer and intercession because it is in this same spot that I will be able to come and gather a harvest and wait for the wind of the Spirit to blow off of my life what is not necessary. 
My God, somebody better talk to me today online. Somebody better talk to me today online. Because I know you've been watching reruns, but this one is not a rerun. My God from Zion. My God from Zion. So when you look at, when you look at the history of this thing, uh, there would be several reasons why you would need a threshing floor. Because somebody said, well, you know what? I don't have enough room. I ain't got no bedroom. I ain't got no big spot like this, Dr. Bynum, to, to be able to, to, to lay down on the floor. But then the Lord <laughs> began to talk to me about, about the scale of the human body. And he said, wheresoever the soles of your feet shall tread, I will give it to you. Lord have mercy. So my point to you today is that after so I get through preaching this message. You better decide today where in your house you're going to lay your body down. Because I heard the Holy Ghost said, those that will lay down will get up with the promise. Those that will lay down will get up with the victory. Those that will lay down will be able to harvest what they have planted. Are you hearing God? So then here in Genesis, the 50th chapter, in the book of Genesis, the 50th chapter, the children of Israel looked on and they saw people coming to the threshing floor because the threshing floor then became a mourning place, Lord Jesus. The threshing floor became a place where people went to mourn when they lost something. They would go there to mourn. And so, my God, head out of Hoshaya, the threshing floor is a place where you go to say, God, I'm taking my burden there. Good Lord, have mercy. I'm telling you, you're going to need it. I told somebody today, I said, the only difference between me and you is that the Lord will send us to the threshing floor so that he can pre-warn us. In a matter of three days, I lost my brother-in-law. This morning, before I came here, about three o'clock in the morning, I lost my 33-year-old niece. Died of a sudden heart attack. But before she passed, the Lord kept drawing me to the floor. The Lord kept saying to me, wake up I need you to come to the floor yesterday morning I said to the Lord I feel something coming and I thank you God for strengthening me because I know it's coming who am I talking to you can't afford to be caught without a floor it's necessary it is vital to your existence and somebody said well how are you up here preaching because I have a floor. Well, 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 how are you sustaining yourself? Because I have a floor. How is it that you got strength to preach to us today? Oh my God. Because of what's behind me. My God. Because I know some of you all thought that was real, real different. But Dr. Bynum, you know, she laying down. You know, she laying down. Because she's laying down for the nation. And then she's laying down. No, I'm laying down for me too. I'm laying down so God can catch me too. I'm laying down so God can warn me too. I'm laying down so that God can sustain me too. I'm laying down so that the wind of the Holy Ghost can blow away the spirit of grief. Because we mourn not like us others do. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? So then we get here. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And God makes a promise. He makes a promise. He makes a promise in the book of Leviticus 26 and 5. Look at what it says. Look at what it says. This thing going to bless you today. This is going to bless you today. Leviticus 26 and 5. It said. Now, now this right here going to make me run. It says here, and your threshing season will last until grape gathering. And the, look, I don't think y'all understand what that meant right there. I don't, I don't think you understand what that meant. That meant that while I am still on the floor threshing my last harvest, I'm going to be threshing so long until I'm going to look up and on the same floor, 
I done started to grow grapes again. Oh my God. I'm not even finished with the lion's harvest. And I got a new harvest coming. Who is God preaching to? God, I wish somebody would talk back to me online today. Because God, I feel this in the Holy Ghost. Here I must up. In other words, in other words, when you become a successful and you become a mature and a skilled thresher, you're not the person that's paying attention to what's coming. You're focused on gathering up what you already have. But because your focus is on what God has given you to pray for, while you're praying for this, God is growing something else on your floor. Who is God preaching to right there? My God from Zion. That thing just blessed me right there. That just blessed me right there. It says that, 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 that your threshing season will last until grape gathering and the grape gathering time uh, will last until planting lord jesus lord jesus i'm going i'm going to thresh until i see new fruit growing and then my fruit is going to keep growing. Is y'all seeing this? My fruit is going to keep growing until it's time to plant again. And you will eat your bread and be filled and live securely in your land. Uh, are y'all, is the pandemic people hearing this? Uh, Lord Jesus, are you hearing this? You got a promise from God. Good Lord. No, this is not men talking to you. You got a promise from God. That, 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 watch this. That if you just lay down on the floor. Good God have mercy. If you just give God a floor. You won't be one of those ones that's struggling. And trying to figure out how you're going to pay your bills. If you just give God. God, a space in your house on the floor. You would not be one of those ones uh, that are living from paycheck to paycheck and wondering when the stimulus is coming. If you just give God a space on your floor, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men. As the Amplified Bible said, the thing that God has set aside that's got your name on it. Are y'all hearing this? Are y'all hearing this? Now this thing got me. This thing got me. Then the book of Deuteronomy is 25 and 4. Well, with Dr. Bynum, I've been going through, I've been going through some things. And, and, and it seemed like every time I get ready to walk through a door, another door shuts. It seemed like every time I get ready to step through something, something that's different happens. But the scripture said, and I want you to hear this loud and clear. I want you to hear this loud and clear. It says in the book of Deuteronomy, 25, 25, 25 and 4. You shall not muzzle the ox while he is threshing. Oh my God. I can run on that. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? I got a surprise for you. I'm telling you, you better share this with somebody. I got a surprise for you. You should not muzzle the ox while he was threshing. I don't think y'all heard that. Maybe some of the workers in here heard that. Maybe somebody out there is really listening to what God just said. You shall not, maybe the mic ain't on. You shall not muzzle, muzzle the ox while he is threshing. So let's get this straight first. He didn't say you should not muzzle a prize horse because we know all they want is show. Okay. He did not say you should not muzzle a baby pony because he don't have the strength. He said you should not muzzle the hardest working animal I got in the kingdom. Oh no, you don't hear me, you don't hear me. You should not muzzle the person that is in intercession and no matter what, they won't stop. You shall not muzzle the person that's always praying, that's always crying, that's always travailing. Good God have mercy. You should, 
Oh God. Because while they are threshing, they are allowed to eat what is on the floor. Oh God, y'all better say something up in here. In other words, I'm going to bless you while you're working. I'm going to bless you while you're praying. I'm going to bless you while you're fasting. Every time you lay down, you're going to get up with something. I'm going to bless you. And I'm not going to let anybody put a muzzle on your mouth and tell you that ain't for you. I, I, I need somebody to say, if it show up on my floor, I'm going to take it. Somebody better, just, somebody better just, just, just put that, Kathy, I know, I know that thing is blessing you. Kathy Bottom, I know that's blessing you. If it show up on my floor, because sometimes I'm praying, and I ain't even thinking about nothing. You know what I'm saying. Sometimes you're down there, I'm down there, and I'm praying for something else, and all of a sudden I hear the Lord say, and I'm getting ready to, I'm getting ready to open up a door. Oops, I wasn't down here praying for no doors open. Y'all ain't saying that. I wasn't down here praying for you to open up a portal to the world. I was down here just blessing your name. I was down here praying for the body of Christ. I wasn't even praying for nothing for me. Who shake out of the Messiah? Let me help you. Let me. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me help you about a thresher. A thresher doesn't go to the threshing floor to thresh for himself. Because I can eat a bowl of wheat and be done. In order to be a real thresher, you got to be threshing so that everybody can eat. You got to be a person that is concerned about your community, concerned about your church, concerned about your family. And while you are threshing for them, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. God have mercy. God have mercy. Oh, yeah, I'm off a break now. I'm off a break. Y'all was like, when is prophet coming back? She back. I'm off a break now. Wait, 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 wait. And so he says here, and he says here, you, I'm not going to let anybody muzzle your mouth. I'm not going to let anybody cause you not to be able to eat what I pop up on your floor while you are praying about something else. Now that by itself would preach. And then we have the floor. We have the floor here where Mr. Gideon said, listen, I'm getting ready to face a battle. And I don't know what to do. I'm getting ready to go into war. And I don't know what to do. So I'm going down to the threshing floor. And I'm going to put cotton on the floor. Come on, somebody. And I'm going to fleece God. So then the threshing floor now becomes an answering floor. Good Lord have mercy. The threshing floor becomes uh, the preparation for warfare. Who is God preaching to? Is he talking to you? I'm telling you, the threshing floor now prepares you uh, for the battle. It tells you uh, you not need to fight in this battle because you've already won it. It gives you the strategies uh, of how to operate and how to navigate uh, when the enemy is trying uh, to entrap you and snare you. Uh, oh, my Shia, you ain't got to ask your mama because she ain't going to always be here. You ain't got to ask your daddy because mine is going to be with heaven. Who am I talking to? You ain't going to be able to ask your friends uh, because the level that God is taking you to, it's an untrodden path. Uh, ain't nobody in your family ever been there before. You going to have to get a floor. Did you hear that? Who talking to me online? You going to have to have a floor. Watch this. I said, okay, God, you answer battles on the floor. Wait a minute. And then he said, and then I spoke to Naomi and Ruth. And I told Naomi to tell Ruth how to go to Boaz's threshing floor. Because the threshing floor causes covenant to take place. Good Lord have mercy. Go, God, I'm the whole shake and I'm a say The threshing floor causes causes God, watch this, it causes God to give you something that was unexpected. Oh, in the midst of while you are, watch this, in the midst of your morning, uh, in the midst of Naomi and Ruth saying, uh, we ain't got enough food, we ain't got enough money, God will send you to the floor and he will cause in the spirit realm uh, for somebody to be, oh God, to hear your name in the spirit. He will send you to the right place. Oh God, how does it happen? How does somebody pay all of my bills? Uh, how does somebody buy somebody a brand new car? How? 
down and pay cash for it. How does somebody drop $100,000 in somebody's account and they didn't ask them for it? Because it happened in the covenant of the floor. The floor, wait a minute, sitting on the floor, relaxing on the floor. Boaz wasn't working, he was laying down. Relaxing on the floor, sitting on the floor. Watch this, waiting for you to get there. Your covenant blessing is already there. Lord, now, now see, I just wish, I just wish I could just run all over this place today. No, 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 it's sitting there waiting for you. Well, Dr. Bottom, I, I'm going through, so wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, Dr. Bottom, you don't, uh, it's sitting there waiting for you. Your, 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 your Boaz promise is, is waiting for you. The thing that is going to cause you to have perpetual wealth is already waiting for you. And I'm not lying, and I'm not trying to prop you up, and I'm not trying to make y'all think that, that there's something going to happen that ain't going to happen. I know, I know, I know the qualifications of this floor. That's what I know. I don't know a lot of things. And I don't pretend to know a lot of things. Good Lord have mercy. I don't know how to build cars. Uh, and I don't know how to put on makeup to the, like an expert. There's a lot of things I don't know how to do, everybody. On the cameras and the musicians. I don't, I don't know how to play a piano. I don't know how to play a guitar. Oh, come on, somebody. I don't know about lighting and what it's supposed to be. I don't know about that. But what I do know, uh, I know the qualifications of the floor. Me and the floor have been in relationship for more than 30 years. Oh God, I'm not hearing y'all. I know what a floor can do. I may not know what a guitar can do, but I know what a floor can do. I may not know what a station wagon can do, but I know what a floor can do. I may not know what the lights can do, but I know what happens when you get on a floor. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, I know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I know that uh -huh. because I, I, I've had I've had, I've had my morning sessions and I've had my gathering, my, my, my gathering sessions. And, uh, and, and I've had, I've had to, to, to fleece God. Good Lord have mercy. I had, I had to fleece him. I had to say to the Lord, I know you said that it is the ungodly that ask you for a sign, but I had to fleece him. And I had to, I had to go to the floor. And so, and so now that I'm here, you know, uh, the, 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 there's many floors that I've had to have. But the thing that I love about this, the thing that I love about the floor, the thing that I love about the floor is that, uh, is that when you understand the concept of it, you can pick it up and take it where you want it to go. Lord Jesus, have mercy. You can go, listen, listen. I got some other blankets in my other house. But guess what I did? I just went to Target and, and, and bought the same stuff because I know what the floor likes. Good Lord have mercy. I know the floor likes white. I know the floor likes purification. Good Lord have mercy. I know the floor. And listen, listen, listen. I know what it likes. I know the dimensions of what it's supposed to be. I know know when the floor is offended because I haven't been there in a while hold on up I can test the temperature of the floor when I lay down and I promise you what I am saying to you is true when I lay down I can tell that morning when the floor is going to yield something supernatural my God and then I get up and people don't know why I'm skipping and they don't know why I'm jumping and they don't know why I'm so happy and I got the joy of the Lord when everything around me look like hell it's because I picked up something up off the floor and I know what's about to happen because the floor spoke to me good Lord have mercy who is he preaching to today who is he preaching to today? listen listen never heard it like that never never heard it like that but the floor got a mouth the floor got a mouth the floor got a mouth, mouth y'all the floor can talk. The other day when I got ready to get up, I got ready to get up off the floor. And I got up on my knees. Pastor Soroya, I got up on my knees. And, 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 and the floor said, not yet. And I stretched back down. And when I tried to get up again, it felt like there was a weight 
that was holding me like a magnet to the floor. And I couldn't get up. And the floor held me in. It held me for a while. And I couldn't get up. And I was saying, God, what are you doing? And the Lord began to come on me. And I start speaking in tongues. And I start speaking in tongues. And I said to the Lord, strengthen me. Strengthen me because I feel something coming. You're trying to tell me something. Who am I talking to? It is not the will of the Lord that the saints be blindsided by the devil. Who am I talking to? Good God, I'm praying. Oh God, I'm trying to bless somebody. It is not the will of the Father that the saints be blindsided. But the difference between you that's watching and somebody else. Hold up, Akasaya. When you suffer a loss you won't lose your mind hold on the difference between you on this page and people out there that is serving the devil when you take a hit you can stand against the walls of the enemy who is God preaching to today somebody better bless his name because I feel him in here today oh one thing about a floor when the enemy comes up to try to torment your mind you can rebuke him by laying down. You ain't got to open up your mouth. But heaven knows what it means to get to the floor. Lord have mercy. And so here we are. And so here we are. And so here we are. Then David. 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 Said wait a minute. I done sinned. And I done. Lord, he started dealing with me about that. He spoke to me about that for three days. He spoke to me about leaning on the arm of the flesh. Three days. Three days he kept bringing it up. He kept bringing it up for three days. He said, don't lean on the arm of the flesh. And I said, okay, God. He said, no, not the arm of the flesh. I said, okay, God. He said, no, no, no. He said, let me take you. Let me take you and show you what David did. And the Bible said, when, when he was faced with a battle, he wanted to ensure his win by his ability. Good Lord, have mercy. You, can I make an announcement to y'all today? You're not going to win by your ability. Good Lord, have mercy. You're not going to win it by your ability. You're going to win it by the right arm of the Lord. Good Lord have mercy. I, I, I'm, I'm going to say that. And, and I, even, though, even though I'm saying it kind of mild. I feel that. It's like I feel a weight in my chest. You're not. Go I'm going to say it to you. Because I'm talking to somebody right now. Who you trying to add up all your ducats. And you trying to say if I get $30 from him. And if I get $20 from this one. And if I get $100 from that one. And if grandma loaned me 20 And grandpa loaned me 50 I can make it. You're not going to win it like that. Because what are you going to do next month. When grandma ain't got it. And grandpa ain't got it. And your sister ain't got it. And your brother ain't got it. You might as well. Stop that foolishness right now and put your trust. The Bible said, and some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. Are you hearing that? Uh, uh, are you hearing that? Are you hearing? You won't win it like that. You won't win it like that. The arm is too weak. The arm is too weak. The arm you're leaning on is too weak. It's not strong enough to carry this one. This one going to take God. Good Lord have mercy. David said let me count. Go out there and count how many people. And you know the sad thing about it. He had somebody that was spiritual trying to tell him don't do that. David don't do that. If I was you. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't count. The Lord's been good to you. No do what I say do. And he sent him out there to count. He sent him out there to count. And the Lord sent an angel to him and told him, you, you just cursed yourself. And there's three things that can happen. It, it, it can be a famine. It can be this. And David said, you know what? I'd rather fall into the hands of an angry God. And the Bible said, and the angel of the Lord pulled out his sheath and he began to destroy. He began to destroy 70,000 people. And David ran and got a threshing floor. Good Lord have mercy, Jesus. He ran and got a threshing floor. And he said, I got to listen. I got to get on this floor. I got to get on this floor. He said, the reason why I got to get on this floor is because, it's because if I don't, God won't stop the angel from killing. 
And the Bible said, watch this. And the Bible said, and the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor with his sword drawn, which means, hey God, which means that God has a heavenly host assigned to threshing floors to do battle. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? When you go down, you got an angel that's standing up, that's watching over you while you laying down and daring the enemy. Good Lord, have mercy. Good Lord, have mercy. God, Pastor Soroya, I feel this thing. I feel this thing. Is somebody hearing this? Shay Carter, Renee Dips, Shante Parker, Barbara Jones, are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? No, 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 they're standing there. They stood in there saying, you go on and pray. You go on and pray. We got this. And David said, I got to pray. And when he went, when he went to Ornan, and he said, I need a floor. And because he was the king, Ornan said, master, you can have it. And this is the thing that's going to help you. This is the thing that's going to help all of y'all. And people that say, well, why are you going to pay for a prayer box? You ain't got to pray for no prayer, kid. You ain't got that body anointing. You ain't got to. No, 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 no. David said, I know I'm the king. Good Lord have mercy. He's saying, I know I'm the king. I know who I am. And he said, and I know you can give it to me if that's what you want to do. He said, but I can't take nothing that I didn't pay a price for. Because when I get the victory on this floor, I'm going to be able to tell somebody, I paid for this. How did you get the victory? I paid for this. How did you get your healing? I paid for this. How was your children saved and filled with the Holy Holy Ghost off of drugs. I paid for it. And David said, and David said, I'm getting ready to walk out here because I got to pray for somebody. This is my surprise. The camera just, the, the, the television just went off. It said, it said here, he said, wait a minute. He said, I didn't, I didn't pay nothing for it. I didn't pay nothing for it. But I got to pay for this floor. I got to pay for this floor. I cannot accept the floor. Except I pay a price for it. So I said, okay, God. I see what you're saying here. So the Bible said, and David, and David, he paid him for the floor. And he paid him for the floor. And he said, when he went to the floor, the Lord stopped the plague. Wait a minute. The Bible said, and the Lord caused the angel to put his sword back in his sheath. Now, y'all got to hear this. You got to hear this because this is going to bless you. This going to bless you because I got to read something to you. Because what you don't know is it's going to be you that's going to have to cry for mercy for your enemies. Because cool. God got a sword out for some people. I read this the other morning I tell you when I get down on that floor when I sit at this desk and they come through here and they see me studying I'm studying because God is trying to give me a word oh I'm writing and finishing my book but when I lay down that is to me uh, that is to the person that's not to the prophetess that's not to the prophetess to the nation that is to me and this is what I came across the other morning I dated it and timed it and that's what some of y'all can't do with y'all little computers and y'all phones that's the, that's, the, that's the whole joy of having a bible you can go back and track what God said hold on I see ya I marked it in my Bible and I want you to listen to this. It says, uh, he says, uh, he says, it says, the King David, and put yourself in that place. Put yourself in that place. Psalms 21. Psalms 21. Put your name there. Because I put my name there. It said, the King David shall joy in your strength, O Lord. And in your salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. You have given him his heart's desire. And have not withheld the request of his lips. Selah. Pause. And think of that. You already got it. Did you just hear that? He said, for you send blessings of good things to meet him oh God Pastor Soraya I almost jumped up and started running and he said he said listen he said listen you hear people say all the time 
Well, you got to come all the way to the Lord. And, and, and he said, he said, for your sins you do, but not for your blessings. All you got to do is meet me halfway. Because the minute you start walking, your blessings is already starting to walk. And the Bible just said, it's going to meet you. Did y'all hear that? It's going to meet you. Uh -huh. It can't meet you if you're still sitting there whining. It can't meet you if you're still sitting there and doubting unbelief. You got to start walking toward what you ask God for. Watch this. Then he says here. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. He asked life of you. And you gave it to him. Long life forever and evermore. His glory is great because of your aid. Splendor and majesty you bestowed upon him. For you make him to be blessed and a blessing forever. You make him exceedingly glad with the joy of your presence. For the king trusts, relies on, and is confident in who the Lord. And through the mercy and the steadfast love of the Most High, he will never be moved. The devil is not going to ever be able to move you out of your threshing floor place. God, I feel you. Somebody in this building, give God a shout right now. Come on, give God a shout right now. You shall never be moved. I know you ain't got no neighbor. I know you ain't got no neighbor. You about ain't got no neighbor in your house. Because everybody is probably sleeping. But you need to run in that room right quick. While they sleep and just touch them and say, I shall not be moved. You don't know what I'm talking about. You may not even remember you be touching you. But you need to run right quick. I'm going to wait for you. You need to run and touch your sleeping baby. You need to run and touch your sleeping husband. You need to run and touch your sleeping daughter. And speak it out of your mouth. I shall not be moved. We're giving you time to run. We're giving you time to run. Uh, the devil don't like this. But God just made you a promise that you shall not be moved. Then he says this. Then he says this. Then he says this. Now watch this. We're talking about threshing floor people. We're talking about what happened when you lay down. Lord have mercy. When you lay down, well, ain't you gonna, ain't you gonna go cuss them out? Nope, I'm gonna lay down. Well, ain't you gonna fight back? Nope, I'm gonna lay down. Well, ain't you gonna call them up and tell them off and tell them to stop lying? Nope, I'm gonna lay down. Well, ain't you gonna get in her face the next time you see her? Nope, I'm going to lay down. That's what I'm going to do. Watch this. Watch this. Well, oh, y'all. Yeah. You mean to tell me you ain't going to try to defend yourself about all that stuff they say? Nope. Nope. I'm going to lay down. Let me help you. Let me tell you why now. Because he said right here, Pastor Roy, this going to bless you. Carla Gaskin, Kadria Shepherd, Sarita Smiley, Carol Bortiz, it's going to bless you. Then he said this. Then the whole text switched. The whole text switched, y'all. The text switched. And it said, your hand, talk about God now. Your hand shall find all your enemies. Your right hand shall find all those who hate you. Because if you hate me, you hate God. And the Lord, while you are laying down, he is looking for his enemies. He is looking for what is bothering you. He is looking for what is tormenting you. He is looking for what is trying to try your faith. And he said, you will make them 
as if in a blazing oven in the time of your anger the Lord will swallow them up in his wrath and the fire will utterly consume them their offspring even their kids you will destroy from the earth and their sons from among the children of men watch this for they planned evil against you they conceived a mischievous plot which they are not able to perform y'all don't want to hear God up in here is y'all listening to God is y'all listening to God they will not be able to perform I don't think you heard me they will not come on be able they gonna plan it they gonna plan it but they will not be able to perform. This is the best part. This is the best part. This is the best part. Stay there. This is the best part. This is the best part. I hear this. I hear this. I hear this. Come on. Come on. I feel rumbling in my spirit. I feel rumbling in my spirit. I read something the other day that you all are supposed to be prophets and you're supposed to be able to prophesy with me. I don't need a musician. You're supposed to be able to prophesy. That's what the scripture said. It said in the word of God, I've read this and it shook me to my core. It said this. It said, and God called David to separate the Levites and he called 4,000 and their job was to praise the Lord with the instruments. That's the only job they had. Good Lord have mercy. It is your job to prophesy. That's what the Bible said. So he says, this is the part they got. It said, for you, Lord, will make them turn their backs. Why? What will cause God to make them turn their backs? You will aim your bow of divine justice at their faces. I'm going to aim a bow at your face. And I'm going to tell you if you don't turn around, I'm getting ready to blow your face off. No, you better open up your mouth and give God a praise. You better see that in the spirit. The enemy is planning a plot, but God is going to draw his bow and say, if you don't turn around, I'm going to blow your face off. Somebody give God a shout. Give him a shout.
is partial to altars. And so I'm looking and I'm hearing the people and I'm having to say to the people, I'm having to say to y'all, well, when I put the next set of prayer shawls on the altar and then we'll take them off and then we'll send them after they have sat on the altar. But we would get the prayer shawls in and there wasn't enough room. And I heard the Lord the other day says, build me a bigger altar. He said, build me a bigger altar. He said, I need a bigger altar. He said, because what I'm getting ready to do now he said the shawls will sit for three days. He said because of resurrection power, everything that the devil thought he was going to put to death in your life. Uh, those that went on to be with the Lord, that was God's decision. But some things that the devil is trying to shut down, the Lord said it shall be resurrected. And God said build me a bigger floor. He said build me a bigger threshing floor. He said and I want you to pull your pallet out here and pull the camera back. And I had to obey God. I need that shot now. He said, do it. He said, do it. And just to show you that I'm not afraid of the devil. I'm not afraid of what he said. I gave God a bigger altar. All that love I got Because God has pulled his bow. Who am I talking to? Be exalted, oh God. In your power and your strength. Be exalted, oh God. In your power and in your strength. Give me a shot from this camera. Oh my God, somebody look at what God is doing. Now we got enough room. Now we got enough room. And the new shows are coming. Hold up, I got second in the head. I said it about up. God is not finished. He's just getting started. Be exalted, oh God, in your power and your strength. up in one day it went up in one day I said I need it open it up let me see it I said I need it I need a bigger altar I got down here and laid the towels I said God we need a bigger altar the Lord said I need this will you do this for me Prayer shawls are going to be around the whole circumference of this altar. Be exalted, O oh God. Be exalted, O oh God. I'm getting ready to lay my hands on that camera. Oh, And I'm getting ready to anoint you. I'm getting ready to anoint you. I'm getting ready to anoint you to lay down. I'm getting ready to anoint you to lay down. And God said for me to tell you that that which you were praying for and it would not break, it is going to break this time. Somebody give God a shout. Somebody give God a shout. Somebody give God a shout. It's going to break this time. Oh, yes, Lord. Your healing is coming. You saying I'm too sick. Well, I hear the Lord saying, if you were dead to roll out of that bed on the floor, you're going to get up whole. Said the Spirit of the living God. Somebody give God a shout. Somebody give him a shout. Somebody give him a shout. Put your hands on that phone. Put your hands on that computer. In the name of Jesus. I break the band of doubt and fear. I anoint their belly. That when they lay down. That prayer shall be answered. Demon spirits will be broken. The shackles will come off. In the mighty name of Jesus. The burden will be lifted. Cancer will be healed. Tuberculosis will be healed. Each being healed, knee replacement. You're getting one now. Kidney replacement. You're getting one now. 
liver replacement. You're getting one now. Heart murmurs. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus. Everybody that's watching, be made whole.
of here last week. We're getting ready for the next set to be set up here. going to blow your mind to know that I got the presence of the living God and the activity of Jesus Christ sitting in my house he said it's time for you that I'm watching to bring the sacred things into your house we've added 15 more phone lines the lines are going to be really busy that's 32 lines you don't want to miss what God is getting ready to do on the new Thurston floor. The operators are standing by. The phone number's on the screen. Don't let the devil talk to your man. Because you know we don't need your $147. We don't. We don't. We're good. But what you need is a sacred thing in your house. What you need, if you are on this, this video today, your family need to see somebody in that house stand up and declare that Jesus is alive and well and that this house is not defeated. This house will not go under. But the Lord shall supply all of our needs. The number is right there on the screen. 914 810 7090-914-810-7090. Keep dialing. Keep dialing. Keep dialing. What did David say? I don't want a floor for free. I don't want a floor for free. I want nothing that I paid nothing for. Because when I get the victory, I'm going to go live this week and read to you some of the testimonies that's coming through here that is blowing our minds. People said when I opened up the box, I couldn't stop crying. When I opened up the box, the Spirit of the Lord filled my house. When I opened up the box, I was sick and had been diagnosed with the coronavirus. Three hours later, I felt nothing. Every symptom was gone. They said it was like I shook myself and said, wait a minute. Every symptom was gone. Call by a sick of a Boshaya. A grandmother that was praying for her grandchildren. Opened up the box and put the prayer shawl on her granddaughters. And the Spirit of God fell on them and filled them with the Holy Ghost right there in the house. I'm telling you, you got to get the sacred thing in your house. Stop letting the devil talk to your mind. You spend more than that in the mall. You spent more than that on weed. You spent more than that on your nails. Would you not pay the price to have the sacred thing in your house? But the Lord has commanded us to build him a new floor. He has commanded us to build him a new floor. And he has already prophesied. He has already prophesied that this will not cease soon. I'm saying to God, when can I get out of here? He said, this will not cease soon. He said, because there are some people. My pastor said a word. Pastor Show said a word a couple of weeks ago. About a month ago. He said, the Lord came to him in prayer. And said, I owe some people. And I'm going to use y'all to pay people for me. The Lord is getting ready to pay you. He getting ready to pay you. He getting ready to pay you. He said, pick up the phone now. He's talking to you. 
you don't have any other choice. I've been back there entering phones. I went back there the other day and answered phones and the depression that I heard in the voices of the people that picked up the phone. The depression that I heard, the heaviness that I heard on them. Let me tell you something, your hope is in God. 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 I gotta go. Take me to the floor. Take me to the floor. Take me to the floor. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Feel you. I feel you. The devil wants you to shake. I was saying it to you some years ago. We don't shake. We shift. I will trust in the Lord with all of my heart and leave not to my own understanding. But in all of thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct my path. He got you. He got you. Bring the sacred thing into your house. 914-810-7090 If the line is busy, hang up and dial again. Keep dialing. God's getting ready to do something for you. Lay down. And watch the victory get up. Button. Hit that contact us button. 